All right, so Jan, uh, I think it's fair to say that as uh, people in the room who may not be deeply aware of auto leave or follow you lately are going to think airbags and seat belts. Mm. But right. that's not where you are now. Tell us where auto leave is. Give us the elevator pitch of today's auto leave. Right. Well, uh, we are the worldwide leader of automotive safety. Um, we started off in the 1950s with uh, seat belts, um, evolved into airbags. Um, and during the 90s, we uh, started off our electronic activities. And uh, mm -hmm. since around 10 years, we are also among the leaders in active safety. Um, we um, started that journey off with an acquisition. Actually, we made an acquisition right a couple of weeks before Lehman Brothers crashed. Mm -hmm. So our investment in technology is really the thing for us. Tell me why. Uh the pace of innovation is so much different now. A lot of companies find that they need to acquire and to merge to stay on top of the pace, where maybe a few decades ago they would have started from the bottom and are indeed their way up into new areas. What's changed? Well, I think, first of all, you have to spend in, uh, quite a lot of money in the different technology areas. I, I don't think anybody can afford or will really be able to do everything by themselves. Mm. I think the cluster formations will become more and more important. I think also customers, uh, car makers, they are looking for different kind of solutions for different platforms, for different geographies, for instance, which also means that clusters being formed will come and go as well. Yeah. Uh, with that in mind, let's take a look at what you did recently. You took auto leave, you split it into two companies, one that is about the passive safety part, and a whole other segment that is about active safety and autonomy. Uh, what's the reason to split those up, and what should people here be thinking of each of those divisions and how they relate to them? We are currently reviewing this. We are in the strategic review, as we call it, and we expect that to be concluded by year end. Um, we are um, aiming for a separation of the companies into two. Uh, and the reason for that is also the same. The pace of innovation is different when it comes to seat belts and airbags. Mm -hmm. It's a relatively mature technology that has been around for quite some time. Whereas in, uh, in technology towards autonomous, dr autonomous drive, I think we all understand how fast that is going. I was out uh, not long ago with uh, Stuart Clapper who's uh, one of your OG engineers, <laughs> one, of the, uh, one of the originals at inventing some of the uh, fascinating technologies in cars today. And we did a look at Auto Leaves night vision technology. And uh, the way that it was, I guess I was expecting it to be, you know, a camera that could bring up things that my eye can't perceive and it would just be a porthole. But it was this smart device that detected things, that turned lights on and off, that would steer lights. Right. Uh, it's much more than just a device business. You've got thinking built into every device, right? Right, well, that I think is the whole point, and that has been our philosophy all the time, to not only pro provide a component, but to, to provide some more intelligence behind it. Uh, our camera technology, for instance, uh, we have developed our own algorithm for object detection, object classification, uh, which is a part of our system integration approach to our OEMs. Uh, one of the things I talked about very early this morning, you may recall, I had a, I had a quick slide we went through. It had four color bands of sort of, uh, uh, it was Intel's take on a stack of layers of how you relate to autonomous vehicles. Because it's not just about the device and the software, it's about a relationship we have to redefine now between us and the autonomous car or even the highly assistive car. This isn't circuits and silicon and software. This is a fuzzy, interesting area. You guys are working in this, right? We are. We, we are uh, having quite extensive research in the area. We, we are also developing our own vehicle for this. We, we call it LEAVE, Learning Intelligent Vehicle. This is uh, actually a car that is capable of sensing the driver behavior, capable of uh, uh, making decisions, um, being really the, the, mm -hmm. the touch so that you as a driver can feel the trust for technology. Because when we, when we put a lot of technology into our cars, the, the ultimate thing is that we need to trust it. We need yeah. to really rely upon the things. And that's why reliability and trust towards technology is essential. And that's uh, actually one of the reasons we developed this car. So we're looking at it here. There's, yeah. a, there's a, a shot of the car. It's a, uh, looks like it's a Lincoln you've worked with there. Um, what are you doing in there specifically that is allowing it to communicate its mission and its competence to me? We are equipping the car with our cameras, with our radars, uh, the eyes and ears from, for the car to observe the environment outside. 
We are equipping the car also with cameras inside the car. We are equipping the car with seatbelts with microphones so that the car can sense what you are doing as a driver, where the sound is coming from if you're talking to the car. The car is communicating to you um, the status of road conditions or what's going to be, what you can expect to happen in front of the vehicle when, while you're driving. Uh, and we believe this is the important part, that you feel safe, that you feel that you have uh, the equipment in the vehicle that you can trust. Because we can't just let an autonomous car go out and, and just hand off to it. That's a big discussion, but say, look, you do the driving, I'm good. We need that feedback loop as yeah. humans, don't we? Right, we do. And, and I, I think it's, it's very uh, symptomatic. If we have equipment in the car, we may have it there, but we may not use it, or we may not trust it. For instance, do you have blind spot detection in your car? Mm -hmm. Does it mean that you don't look over your shoulder? Nope. That's great. I don't think it's reduced my looking over my shoulder. It's added more signals when I maybe should be looking. Right. It's filled in holes, but it hasn't taken away my attentiveness, I don't think. Right. But this is the thing. If we are going to equip the vehicle with a lot of uh, features, we have to trust them ultimately. Yes. I don't think there is anybody here in the room that second guess the brake pedal. OK. So that means also that the more we can understand about the equipment in the vehicle, the more we can understand about the different levels and the assistance level in the vehicle, the better we can integrate it in our normal driving behavior. I know when I've driven uh, over the years, over the last few years as I've been out and uh, been able to go out with automakers or technology companies into their autonomous vehicles as they've grown rapidly in the last few years, um, the thing that I'll notice and I'll say to people, especially family and friends who aren't in the business, they'll say, well, what's that new whatever light that you took a drive in? I'll say, you know, it felt more confident. And they go, what are you talking about? It's a machine. What do you mean it felt more confident? But I'll tell them it had less starts and stops, less, less little zigs and zags, less darts where it had to catch itself and it just settled down. Right. It's the best way I would describe yeah. it. And it gave me confidence. Right. I would almost find myself rather rapidly in some of the most recent cars kind of getting bored with the demo because it was uneventful. Yeah. And that was the key. Right. Yeah. But you know, that, that's how you really would like it to have. Yeah. In the normal state of driving, you, you, you want it to have it uneventful. Yeah, I don't want trauma. No, you don't. I don't want excitement. <laughs> I don't want that kind of excitement. It's like, no, no. Everything should be very low key. If I want to introduce excitement, I'll do it on a nice country right. road. Uh, tell me how this might communicate with people that are outside the car. Are you working on that at all? Because pedestrians and cyclists are around this vehicle as well. Yeah, well, the car senses through the, the sensors outside. They can sense if a pedestrian goes around the car, it can sense what's around the vehicle through the sensors that we have and also communicate that to the, um, to the driver and to the people inside the vehicle. Okay. Now let's talk about... Um, you got, a, you got an arrangement going on here in this era of partnerships. Uh, it's getting a little, a little hard to, to follow, right? There's an awful lot of moving pieces. The one that I want to talk about with you is between Autoleave and Volvo, which is a partnership called Zenuity. Yes. What do you do in Zenuity? Zenuity is uh, actually a company on its own. We formed a 50-50 joint venture between yeah. Autoleave and uh, Volvo Car Corporation for decision-making software. We are adding uh, our capability when it comes to sensor development, um, camera development, radar development, and they are adding their vehicle decision-making people into the same company. This means that we can develop the software based on unfiltered pre-processed data. We can have it uh, genuinely coming from the sensor from pixel basis and up. And this will be, I believe, will give us an advantage. We've had a lot of people talk here on stage today about cars perhaps becoming interchangeable pods or modules, which is their way of saying the center of mass of the industry moves from the big foundries that crank out cars to people that build what we, what we used to call reference, reference kits in technology that companies perhaps like yours are going to license. Does this industry start to come from a different place than the traditional automaker, if you can speak frankly to that? Well, I think, you know, going forward, I think the industry will go through change in many dimensions. And I think that also including software into the vehicle will require different upgrades over time. Um, and that will also make it possible to see different business models, both for OEMs and also 
for us as uh, car users. You're going to be coming to market with Zenuity and offering this technology, uh, sensors, and I like the phrase decision-making software. It's so plain spoken. <laughs> Everything's AI. No, it's decision-making software. Um, to take that package, you obviously are going to take that and make it available to the market to many, right. uh, many comers who wanted to be, become customers. This is going to be a fray in the next few years of people getting into this at a high level. How are you going to stand out and be different? We believe that we have a very, very good environment in Gothenburg or in here in, in Michigan also and in Germany, developing this in tight cooperation with the sensor part and the car part. And that is, I think, is going to be the key for us. Uh, we are launching the first version in ADAS uh, in 2019, All and right. then uh, for level four, we are expecting to launch that in 2021. Okay. Um, we often talk about this industry being very, you know, very global, very multinational, and everything seems to be a sort of a generic technology community. But tell me what it means to be a Swedish company in this area. What sensibility does Auto Leave have, being where it's from, that makes it different than other players? Well, we have, we have, of course, the ability to be a little bit neutral, a little bit not historically connected to any bigger cluster uh, from where we are coming. We have been developing our products in tight cooperation with one or the other OEMs over the years. But this has mean that we have been good establishment inside Japan. We have good establishment inside the Germany and the German auto industry. Mm -hmm. And also, of course, here in the US with the Troy 3. So we have been able to operate and attract people first coming from our research center in Vorgoda, where it's all yeah. started off in outside Gothenburg, but from there being expanded into different geographies. We are talking a lot about very advanced, high technology sorts of areas, but let's go back, if you, we can, to your core business as it's evolving. Uh, you, you recently, I saw a demo of something that was a, a very different kind of an airbag that is not predicated on me sitting like this, facing the dash, and likely having a frontal collision or being sent back and forth this way, but it's almost like a cocoon supplemental right. restraint. I think we have a look at that. Maybe we, we can bring it up on the screen. It's, uh, in fact, uh, what's happening when when autonomous drive gives us more ability to sit in different seating positions. Different it, angles, right? Different it's angles. like a living room on wheels. Exactly, you yeah. are what we call out of position. We could be you, sitting here talking as the car like drives this. us. The car is driving in this direction. Yeah. You cannot have a frontal airbag meeting you like this, which means that the restraint systems will <laughs> be necessary to integrate in a different, in a different yeah. way in, into the seats. And also the geometries of seatbelt systems will also likely change over time. Oh, right. So there is a, right. yeah, exactly, because otherwise you will be sliding out of the uh, And going the, right the through the system. Yes. Yeah. Which means that the geometries and the installations in the car will look different because we're sitting different. And, and we will have the freedom to do that. And as much as this looks like it comes from, you know, the old school of your business, this is a component of instilling confidence into the newer side, the autonomy message, because the consumer who might have a little concern may look at this and say, well, I do have this going for me. Yeah, well, you know, as long as we will have a blended environment, no matter how good your own car is, and no matter how well equipped your vehicle will be and how much it can stop, you may have somebody slamming into your, into your car. Right. So you will have to be taken care of from an occupant protection point of view. For Is there some place where Auto Leave is planting its flag on what seems to be a bit of a fever right now to make uh, commitments to say, by a certain date, our cars will never be involved in nor cause a fatality or serious injury. These claims have come from a couple of different parties, major automakers as tech and technology upstarts. We heard from Toyota, we've heard it from Volvo. Where do you sit in that? Where do you see us being able to make a mark in history and say this era of injury has ended or fatality is going to end at this year? We measure it in a little bit different way. Our passion is saving lives. Our products is here to do one thing, save lives and mitigate injuries. Our product saves today around 30,000 people's lives every year. And we have set a marker out there. At some point in the future, we will save 150,000 people's lives every year. That's our marker. That's what we are looking for. Huh. Um, you're also doing something that I think is uh, often under 
appreciated uh, in the marketing community, perhaps in the automotive community, and that is you have a seniors project. We've heard a lot about seniors here because finally the automotive market has something new to offer people who might otherwise have lost some of their ability to drive or drive well. And you're redoubling your effort on enabling seniors and or protecting them. What's the seniors project about? Well, the seniors project we are looking into is the fact that the world's population is aging. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look to 2030, 20% 20 of the drivers are 65 years old or above. Okay. If you look to the fatalities here in the US, 2015, 10% of uh, the fatalities were, uh, uh, 10% of the injuries were above 65 years old, okay. but 18% of the fatalities was above 65 years old. So mm. the likelihood for being killed in the car accident is much higher if you're older. A 70-year-old person has around six times higher risk to uh, be killed in a crash than a 20-year-old. So from that point of view, it is very important that we look to the, the system because of rib fractures, the load of a seatbelt, for instance, in a crash may harm you yeah. um, and also cause, you, cause injuries um, to your body. And this is why we are looking and researching this and uh, developing products uh, for, for um, uh, adopted for elder, elder systems. Different, uh, the term I hadn't seen before, different, different anthropometry. Right. That, well, that's how you measure and adapt to a different yes. body? Yes, how, how, how you can, how the body can take the load and how you adopt to that. You aren't doing this on your own. You obviously see demand from car makers. What are you seeing out there that's inspired you as much as it's an altruistic goal, but there's a market you must see. There. Well, there, there, is a, there is clearly a market out there. There is clearly an interest there, but I also think that maybe there would be a, 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 some kind of a, of a silver rating or something would uh, help the industry going forward because I think this will be a focal point if you look maybe 10, 20 years out. Uh, just in final thoughts here, we're on the cusp of a new year, 2018. Uh, what do you hope to accomplish? Is there one big particular project that you want to get completed or gelled or start or anything along those lines that is going to be a big beachhead for you in 2018 at AutoLeave? For, for AutoLeave, of course, the strategic review of separating the company into two, uh, that is a focus po focal point for us. Um, okay. And we expect that to happen sometime during the third quarter or so. Uh, so that is a big thing on top of everything else that we do. Um, in active safety, in passive safety. And I noticed that uh, we were talking earlier, uh, a lot of your main messaging and your appearance and your presence of the company happening more and more at technology conferences than necessarily having a dedicated uh, presence at even the world's largest automotive shows. What's behind that? Well, we, f from our point of view, we are pretty well known to uh, a lot of uh, our customers anyhow. We don't need to be there to market ourselves on an auto show. Um, but okay. it is important for us to get out with the different technologies that we are developing and the innovation capacity that we have in our group. And that, I think, is more for us going from passive to active to our customers, to the people, and okay. be able to speak about the capacity that we have. Telling the new story. Telling the new story. Very good. Jan, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate thank you it. very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Jan Carlson, CEO of AutoLeave. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Thank Thanks you. very much.